The space speeder shuddered and groaned as it hurtled through the starry void. After trying to shake the relentless hunter by leaving Earth, was barely holding together as it dodged asteroids, space debris, and the occasional bewildered space pigeon. Artie, professional nobody and reluctant hero, gripped the controls with the sort of white-knuckled desperation usually reserved for roller coasters or particularly nasty tax audits. Beside him, Zilara, the ethereal alien who had somehow turned his life upside down in the span of a single night, was flipping switches and muttering curses in a dozen different languages, none of which Artie understood, but all of which sounded impressively dangerous. Behind them, Varka's ship loomed like a bad mood with engines, bristling with enough firepower to turn a small moon into a large cloud of dust. Artie could feel the tension in the air, thick enough to cut with a rusty butter knife, and the only thing more terrifying than the bounty hunter on their tail was the fact that Zilara hadn't said a word to him since they'd fled his now thoroughly destroyed apartment. He considered this a bad sign. The silence stretched on, punctuated only by the wailing of the speeder's overworked engines and the occasional explosion as Varka's ship took potshots at them. Finally, unable to take it any longer, Zilara glanced over at Artie, her expression caught somewhere between exasperation and reluctant concern. All right, human, she said, her voice tight with the kind of patience one might use with a particularly ignorant child. What's bothering you? And don't say it's the homicidal maniac chasing us because I've got that covered. Artie blinked momentarily distracted from the imminent threat of being vaporized by Varkor's relentless pursuit. Oh, it's not that, he said, waving a hand dismissively as if being hunted across the galaxy by a vengeful ex-lover was a minor inconvenience. I'm just, well, I'm worried about my apartment. Zilara stared at him, her large, luminous eyes narrowing in disbelief. Your apartment? she repeated, as if she couldn't quite believe the words had actually come out of his mouth. Yeah, my apartment, Artie said, nodding earnestly as Zilara narrowly avoided a collision with a particularly aggressive asteroid. I mean, it was a great place, you know, close to work, close to the bar, amazing location and views, and now it's, well, it's kind of a smoking crater, and I'm pretty sure I've lost my security deposit. Zilara rolled her eyes so hard, Artie was afraid they might actually roll right out of her head. Is that all you're worried about right now? We have a crazy bounty hunter on our tails, and you're concerned about your security deposit? Artie opened his mouth to protest, then thought better of it. Okay, maybe that's not all I'm worried about, he admitted, glancing down at the small, unimpressive laser pistol clutched in his hand. I mean... There's also the fact that you've got that handy-dandy wrist device that can summon all sorts of amazing, big, cool-looking weapons, and I'm stuck with this... this pea-shooter. Why do I get the feeling I'm not exactly equipped for this situation? Zilara let out a long, weary sigh, the kind that suggested she was wondering why she hadn't just left him behind in the first place. I told you before, she said, her tone one of someone explaining something to a particularly dense rock. You're not ready for the big stuff yet. You don't just get the good weapons straight away. There's a learning curve, Artie. And besides, she added, her lips quirking into a small, almost imperceptible smirk, your little pea-shooter was quite effective in helping us escape when you temporarily blinded Varkor back there. Artie's brow furrowed as he replayed the events of the last few minutes in his mind. Wait, that actually worked? I thought he was just really bad at aiming. Zilara shot him a sidelong glance that suggested she was seriously reconsidering her life choices. Yes, Artie, it worked. It bought us just enough time to get out of there. So maybe stop complaining and start appreciating your contribution to our continued survival. Artie's face lit up with a mixture of pride and relief. Huh. Well, I guess that's something. Still, it would be nice to have a big gun, you know. Something that says, don't mess with me, 
I've got a big gun. Zilara snorted, her early attention easing just a fraction. Trust me, Artie, a big gun wouldn't make you any less of a target. Varka's the kind of guy who sees a big gun and thinks, oh good, more of a challenge. You're better off with that little thing. It's unexpected, and Varka underestimates the unexpected. Artie mulled this over for a moment, his grip on the controls loosening slightly as he tried to process the idea that his apparent lack of firepower was actually an asset. It was like being told that the rusty old speeder they were currently hurtling through space in was actually a top-of-the-line model because it was so decrepit that no one would ever suspect it could still run. So what's the plan? Artie asked, trying to sound more confident than he felt. He glanced nervously at the proximity scanner, which was flashing red with alarming frequency as Varka's ship closed in on them. Zilara didn't answer immediately. She was focused on her wrist device, fingers flying over the holographic interface as she calculated their next move. The speeder rocked violently as another blast from Varka's ship streaked past them, missing by inches. Artie winced and tightened his grip on the controls again, knuckles turning white. Finally, Zilara looked up, her expression a mix of determination and something else, something darker that Artie couldn't quite place. We need to get to the wormhole nexus, she said, her voice clipped and matter-of-fact. It's the only place nearby where we can lose Varkor. He's good, but even he won't follow us through there. The wormhole nexus. Artie repeated, his voice rising an octave. Isn't that the place where all the wormholes intersect, the one with the 98% chance of ending up in a completely random part of the universe? Or, you know, dead? Zilara gave him a look that suggested she was refraining from rolling her eyes solely out of respect for the situation. Yes, that wormhole nexus, and it's actually a 95% chance of randomness. The other 5% is just extreme disorientation. But the point is, it's our best shot. Artie swallowed hard. Right, sure. And the plan for after we miraculously survive this suicidal dive into the Nexus? Zilara shrugged. We improvise, oh, and I've seen you playing that video game that looked like a space simulator, and your score was high with some fancy flying. It's very similar to the real thing, and might give us 7% more of a chance of survival, she looked at Artie with a slight smile of reassurance. Artie had many talents, most of which involved finding creative ways to avoid responsibility, but improvisation wasn't one of them. He was the sort of person who liked things planned out, preferably by someone else, with plenty of time to review and make adjustments. Improvisation, in his experience, usually led to things like spilled drinks, embarrassing misunderstandings, and, on one memorable occasion, a run-in with a particularly unpleasant intergalactic tax collector. However, seeing as their current situation was already well beyond his comfort zone, and the alternative involved being turned into a fine mist by Varkor, he decided to keep his reservations to himself. All right, he said, more to himself than to Zilara. Wormhole Nexus it is. Let's do this. The speeder's engines whined in protest as Artie pushed them to their limits, charting a course for the Nexus. The stars outside blurred into streaks of light as they accelerated, the gravitational forces straining the ship's aging hull. Zilara kept one eye on the rear sensors, monitoring Varko's pursuit, while the other eye, metaphorically speaking, was on Artie, who was pale but determined. Varka's ship was still gaining on them, its weapon systems locking onto their speeder with unnerving precision. Zilara tapped a few more commands into her wrist device, deploying a series of countermeasures, flares, chaff, anything to throw Varka off their trail. The bounty hunter was relentless, though, his ship dancing through the debris with the same ruthless efficiency that had made him one of the most feared trackers in the galaxy. Almost there, Artie muttered, more to reassure himself than anything. His eyes were fixed on the view screen, where the Nexus was beginning to come into view. It was a swirling, chaotic mass of energy, like a cosmic whirlpool, 
with tendrils of light and matter spiraling into the unknown. Just looking at it made Artie's stomach do flip-flops. He wasn't sure if it was the fear or the sheer absurdity of what they were about to attempt that made him feel queasy. Zilara's voice cut through his thoughts. Get ready. We'll have one shot at this. The moment we're close enough, I'll trigger the jump. You just focus on keeping the speeder in one piece. Right, Artie said, his throat dry. The wormhole nexus was a kaleidoscope of insanity. Colors that shouldn't exist danced through the cockpit, swirling like cosmic graffiti sprayed by a manic artist on the fabric of space-time. Artie's knuckles were white as he gripped the controls, his mind struggling to comprehend the sheer lunacy of what they were doing. Zilara was the picture of calm beside him, her fingers a blur over the holographic interface of her wrist device, guiding them through the storm with the practiced ease of someone who had danced with death before and found it a rather boring partner. The speeder bucked and shuddered as it hurtled through the nexus, dodging the gravitational eddies that threatened to tear it apart. Artie's heart was pounding in his chest, every instinct screaming at him to turn back. But there was no turning back now. They were committed for better or worse, and the only way out was through. Almost there, Zilara muttered, her eyes glued to the readouts on her device. The speeder groaned in protest as it fought against the pull of the Nexus, its engines straining to keep them on course. Artie could see the exit point ahead, a shimmering pinpoint of light that seemed impossibly far away and yet terrifyingly close. With a final desperate burst of speed, they broke through the other side, the chaotic swirl giving way to the serene blackness of normal space. The speeder's engine sputtered and died, leaving them drifting in the calm after the storm. Artie let out a breath he hadn't realized he was holding. We made it, he said, his voice shaky with relief. We actually made it. Zilara allowed herself a small smile. Of course we did, she said, as if there had never been any doubt. I told you, Varkor wouldn't follow us through the Nexus. He's too cautious for that. Artie nodded, feeling the tension slowly ebb from his body. So, where are we? Zilara checked her wrist device, frowning slightly. We've ended up in a quiet sector, mostly uninhabited. There's a small moon nearby with a breathable atmosphere. We can land there, rest up, and figure out our next move. Artie nodded again, his brain still catching up with everything that had happened. Right, rest, that sounds good. The moon was a tranquil place, a small, rocky outpost with a thin layer of dusty vegetation and a sky that seemed permanently stuck in twilight. The speeder touched down with a gentle thud, and Artie slumped back in his seat, finally allowing himself to relax. The silence was almost deafening after the chaos of the Nexus, and for a moment he just sat there, breathing deeply and letting the adrenaline drain from his system. Zilara, on the other hand, seemed completely unfazed. She stretched languidly, her movements graceful and fluid, and gave Artie a look that he was too exhausted to interpret correctly. Well, she said, her voice low and husky, now that we've survived that little adventure, how about we celebrate? Artie blinked, still trying to process the fact that they were alive and not splattered across several dimensions. Celebrate? He repeated, his brain stubbornly refusing to engage with the implications of her tone. Zilara leaned closer, her eyes half-lidded and her lips curving into a seductive smile. Yes, Artie, celebrate. Surely you can think of a way we could relieve some stress after all that excitement. Artie stared at her, his mind racing. Stress relief? What was she? Oh, oh. His face turned beet red as the penny finally dropped, and he stammered, You mean, you want to? Now, but we just... I mean, we barely got away from Varkor, and he's still out there. And... Zylara's expression shifted from seductive to frustrated in the blink of an eye. Artie, the fact that my ex-lover is trying to kill us is exactly why we should take advantage of every moment we have. We're alive, aren't we? We should enjoy it. 
Artie opened his mouth to respond, but the words got tangled up somewhere between his brain and his tongue. He was still too rattled from their narrow escape, and the idea of, well, of that, was making his already overtaxed nervous system short-circuit. He was about to offer some sort of apology when Zilara, clearly fed up with his dithering, decided to take matters into her own hands. She leaned in and kissed him, her lips warm and insistent against his. Artie froze for a moment, his brain caught completely off guard, but then something clicked, and he found himself kissing her back, the tension and confusion melting away in the heat of the moment was short-lived, as the momentary lapse in concentration was all that Varkor needed, and posed his ship right in front of theirs, and to his surprise they weren't even ready for a battle. Instead, he saw Zilara kissing Artie like a crazed Valusian tiger, which made his blood boil, let out a roar in anger that could be heard across the whole entire universe, and that was putting it mildly.